This is practice exercise from page 47 of the textbook. We're going to look at determining the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom, and also writing a symbol once we know how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in an atom. So in the first one, they tell us that we have a, an atom with a symbol of 138 Ba, and we need to figure out the protons, neutrons, and electrons. I'm going to start by writing out symbols. So protons is a P with a plus because protons are positive. Neutrons are neutral, so they've got a superscript of zero, and electrons are negative, so they have a negative superscript. Now, in order to determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, we're also going to need to use the periodic table. Number of protons is always equal to the atomic number. And the atomic number is what we find in the periodic table. So if we go look for barium, on the periodic table. We can find it down here. And the top number, 56, that's our atomic number. Atomic numbers are always whole numbers, so we know that the atomic number of barium is 56, which means we are going to have 56 protons. In order to figure out the neutrons, we need to know the mass number. So the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in an element. This makes sense because only protons and neutrons have mass. The mass of an electron is so small that we essentially ignore it when we do these calculations. So anytime we're asking about the mass number, we're asking you about what's going on in the nucleus of the atom. And again, that's just the protons and the neutrons. So where do we find the mass number? The mass number is given in this um, isotope notation as 138. So we know we've got a total mass of 138. We know that 56 of that is because of protons. So whatever's left over is due to the neutrons. So if we solve for neutrons, we can see that in this atom there must be 82 neutrons because 56 plus 82 will give us the 138. And the last thing is the electrons. Electrons are found outside of the nucleus, and it's the electrons that balance the charge of the protons. So we look at this symbol, and we see that there's no charge listed. And if there's no charge listed, that means we have a neutral atom. So the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So in this atom, we've got 56 protons, 82 neutrons, and 56 electrons. Notice that that mass number, 138, doesn't actually appear anywhere when you solve for protons, neutrons, and electrons. That mass number is the sum of the protons and the neutrons. So we can do something similar for the next one. We're looking at an atom as phosphorus 31. So this is very similar, just a different way to write the notation. Again, they're telling us that we have phosphorus. So we can go ahead and look in the periodic table for phosphorus. We can find phosphorus right here. Since phosphorus has an atomic number of 15, that tells us how many protons we have. So we can write this in. Protons equals 15. Then we can go ahead and look at the mass number. So remember that the mass number is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. In this case, we know the mass number is 31. We know that we've got 15 protons, so all the rest of the mass must come from the neutrons that are also in the nucleus. And if we do this math, we can see that there must be 16 neutrons. Last thing we need to look at are the electrons. Again, since no charge was given for this, we know that the electrons must be equal to the protons, because in a neutral atom, there are the same number of protons and electrons. For the last problem, we're actually going to build our own symbol and work backwards. Now they're telling us the protons, electrons, and neutrons, and we're going to determine what symbol that represents. So again, taking a look at the number of protons, we know that the protons, 82, that tells us the atomic number. So if we look at the periodic table, the element with atomic number 82 is lead. And remember that the periodic table is arranged by increasing atomic number. So as you read this way, notice that the atomic numbers increase, and that's how you can find elements. So again, atomic number 82 is lead. So that means when I'm writing the symbol, the symbol is going to have 
Pb. If I look at the number of electrons, I can see that I have the same number of protons and electrons. That tells me that there's no charge. Since there's no charge, I don't have to write anything in the symbol. Now they also tell me that I've got 126 neutrons. Remember that the mass number is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. So I need to find the mass number, and that mass number is going to be equal to the 82 protons plus the 126 neutrons. Notice that I'm not adding in the electrons. The mass of the electron is so small that we don't include it in the mass calculations. So when we're finding the mass number, we only worry about particles that are present in the nucleus, so that's only the protons and neutrons. So this means that I've got a mass number of 208, and that goes on the upper left-hand side of the symbol. So the symbol is 208 Pb, or you could also write it with the atomic number on the bottom left. You do not have to put the atomic number on the bottom left because you can always look that up in the periodic table. So either one of those symbols would be acceptable, either just putting in the mass number or including the mass number and the atomic number.